All right, welcome back to chapter six examples. Here we have an example that's a little bit tougher than the examples that we've had up until this point. And the only reason it's a little bit tougher is because we have to think about um, vectors at angles. It's been a while since we've seen those, um, but we do have them in this example and in this chapter. All right, so what we have is a mass that is circling. So the reason I've drawn two things here is just to recognize that we could catch it on either end here as it goes around and around. And the two kilogram mass, so we can make our list of given information, two kilograms for the mass, in a horizontal circle at the end of a 1.5 meter long string. So we need to recognize right away that normally we've had nice flat one dimensional kind of circles and the length of this string was our radius. That is not the case here. We have a little triangle that we could make where the radius that we care about is the radius of this very flat circle. So the triangle here, this radius, and the 1.5 meters is this long hypotenuse side. And the 30 degree angle we can draw in it is in the picture on the slide itself. And so the radius is 1.5 sine of 30 degrees, which is equal to 0 0.75 meters. All right, so we can add that to our list of given information. R equals 0 0.75 meters. And what we're looking for is the speed of the circling and the time period. So we have started to discuss time period at the very end of the lecture video part one. And this is the first time that we're using it in a problem, but we'll, we'll reintroduce that and remind ourselves of it um, here in just a bit. But what we want to recognize right away is we're looking for speed, so we don't have it, but it means that we do need to be thinking about how these forces are causing a circular motion. Any time that we have a circle in a problem, that means we need to recognize that the net force in the circle direction is equal to mass times centripetal acceleration. And so we have gravity straight down. So gravity is mg, which is equal to 2 times 9.8, which is equal to 19.6 newtons. We also have the tension at an angle. We have dealt with tensions at angles before. The end of chapter 4, um, we had hanging rope problems with a lot of these. And we know how to break forces into pieces. We have a triangle, and if we draw it over and then up, we get the exact same angle that we need to to identify the 30 degrees in this exact same upper left corner of this triangle. And so that means that the FTY or TY is equal to the total tension times the cosine of 30 degrees and the tension in the x direction is equal to the total tension times the sine of 30 degrees. All of that can go into our drawing before we decide whether we know how to solve for these things or not. Now, the other thing I want to note is a lot of students somehow decide that the 1.5 meters is the tension, we must never ever use a unit or a, a quantity that has a unit that is different than what we know that we're supposed to be plugging it into. 1.5 meters can only be a length. It can never be a tension. So students tend to kind of mix up the fact that we've got this triangle used in two different cases for two different uses, basically. And we need to make sure that we're not cutting corners and just kind of forgetting about why that exists. Okay, a small aside. 
All right, first of all, we know that we're doing a horizontal circle, which means that when we're looking at the forces in the vertical direction, they do not add up to mass times centripetal acceleration. They, they add up to zero. We are not physically moving up or down, and we are not making a vertical circle. So Ft in the y direction, the force of tension, y component, minus gravity, subtracted because they're in opposite directions, equals zero. So Ft cosine 30 degrees minus 19.6 equals zero. We see that there is only one unknown, so we can start to solve for it. Ft cosine 30 degrees equals 19.6. We added 19.6 to both sides. We divide both sides by cosine 30 degrees, so 19.6 divided by cosine 30 degrees gets us 22.6 newtons. Now, this is important because now we don't have an unknown anymore in the x direction. The net forces in the x direction are equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. There is only this one force in the x direction. So Ft sine 30 degrees is equal to m, and the reason I'm going to use v is because the speed here would be the v value. So the v squared over r is going to be more useful to us than the radius times omega squared. All right, so we can plug in the numbers that we have. We have 22.6 times the sine of 30 degrees on the left. The mass is 2 kilograms. Velocity is what we're looking for and the radius is 0 0.75. So I've shifted the screen down a little bit to give us some more room. So on the left side we have 11.3, on the right side we have 2.67 v squared. So we can divide both sides by 2.67 and take the square root of both sides. So this will cancel, and the square root of v squared is going to give us v on the right, and the square root of 11.3 divided by 2.67, all of that can go into our calculator, and we will get 2.06 meters per second. So just a little bit over 2 meters per second to go all the way um, for the speed as it's going around in circles. So that's one of the two things we're looking for. The other thing we're looking for is the time period. Now we have from our slides that if we know the specific time period to go once around, we have a slightly more specific tool to use to relate that time period to speed. Because it will be a distance of one full circumference, 2 times pi times r, divided by that time period will be equivalent to our speed here. So if we multiply both sides by t, we get 2.06 times that time period t, just to get it out from the bottom, is equal to 2 times pi times the radius, which is 0 0.75 in this case. We've already been using that. It's over here. And then we can divide both sides by 2.06 to get our final answer. So that time period here way at the bottom of our screen is 2.29 seconds. So a little over two seconds to go once fully around the circle. So if we want to test this for ourselves, we can find um, a piece of string and a mass and actually have it go around and around at a 30 degree angle in class. We do a demonstration of this and um, we can kind of confirm for ourselves that a couple of seconds is a reasonable amount of time to go once around. The other thing I want to make sure we are thinking about as we finish up this problem is that it is useful for us to continue this list of what were the forces causing the circular motion. So what went into F net for the circle? And in this case, it was over here. It was a specific component of the tension. So because we had a horizontal force, this was in the X direction, and it goes into our list where hopefully what we're seeing is that every situation we're presenting has a slightly different set of forces 
that are part of F net equals mass times centripetal acceleration. But each time, even though the forces causing the circle are different, we're still applying the same process. And that's what we mean by finding that underlying common thread between each problem in a particular chapter. We um, saw in this example that the thing that made this one a little bit trickier is we had an angle to have to deal with. We are familiar with, or should be familiar with, breaking forces into components and using Y forces separate from X forces. That's something we've been doing throughout chapters 4 and 5 before this. But the extra part that we recognized here was new to this problem is that we also had to break this length into the part we care about, the horizontal piece is the radius of our circle, and the part that we don't care about, how far below the ceiling we are. So as you look back at this problem compared to all the others, the process is very similar. There was just a little bit more to think about because we had an angle to, to worry about. All right, I will see you in the next examples.